Hello, everyone, and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. Glad that you've joined us today, and I hope that you'll share this out on your social media platform. The information we're going to bring you today is certainly right up to date, and the Bible is right up to date, because throughout the Word of God, we find God dealing with nations, with people, concerning their economy. And today, I want to spend just a few moments with you uh, with one of the top two issues that is most concerning for Americans and uh, places worldwide. China and others are finding this inflation and uh, economic downturns, as they want to call it, whatever, transitionals, all the different terms that are used. The bottom line is, is that everyday individuals in America and around the world are finding themselves pressed economically because that oppression, that suppression, even leading to depression is a serious issue for every individual. Here in the United States, uh, according to this particular article, if the high cost of groceries makes you feel sick, then you're not alone. The article states that now a United States household, a, whether it's one or three or 10, whatever, is now having to earn more than $1,069 additional funds per month just to keep up with inflation. According to this article, some $13,000 every year has now to be added to the budget, added to the income of every United States household just to be able to keep up uh, with where they were just two years ago. According to this article, it's also uh, been shown by a very clear example on a social media platform where an individual had ordered groceries on their phone uh, a year ago, and now uh, they order those same groceries a year later, and they compared the retail of a major department store, a major grocery center, uh, what was $126 uh, just two years ago, now has increased from $126 to $414 for the same groceries. What's going on? Well, it's very clear that what is being said from the media and others concerning everything is okay with the economy and we're increasing and jobs and everything else that wants to be thrown against the wall, hoping something will stick. The bottom line is, is that the average individual is feeling that crush economically. And according to this particular article, more companies are announcing bankruptcies and closures. Uh, there is, in this article, it cites that inflation is now the cause of more than 3,200 stores facing closure in 2024. From now to the end of the year, stores like Rue 21, CVS, 7-Elevens, Rite Aids, Walgreens, Macy's stores, Burlington, Foot Locker, Big Lots, Dollar General, Best Buys across the nation are now going to close their doors based upon a number of different factors, uh, but they're all economic in their base, in the foundation of them. Some of these stores cannot survive in the Northwest because of the lawlessness that's taking place and absolute uh, theft, robberies that are happening that there is no prosecution for. So they've got to close their stores. The real question is, what does the Bible have to say concerning this very issue? I would encourage you to go on to our YouTube channel at Pace Assembly and you'll find a message that I've recently preached, How to Have a Blessed Nation. You'll find more information about what I'm talking about today. And the Bible is so clear that it states it from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation that woven into it is God's plan for economic prosperity and also for curses upon the economy when people do not obey the Lord. As a matter of fact, in Deuteronomy 28, I would encourage you to go there and read it you'll find that there are a list of blessings that are found when a nation will obey God, obey his word, and stay true to his statutes and judgments. Why is that so important? Because if you read right on down, it also gives a very clear uh, statement from Moses preaching to the children of Israel that there will be curses that will fall upon a nation and a people who refuse to obey God, to follow after him, that follow after other gods, and that uh, cause themselves to go away from the word of God as for life and for living. So what are some of those curses that we find in the scripture that Moses told Israel they would suffer if they turned away from God? Well, it says uh, curses upon the cities, curses upon our economy, according to the scripture, curse upon the future markets, 
uh, curses upon foreign negotiations. Uh, nations will be in perplexity. Leaders will be in perplexity. The Bible says there in verse number 21 of Deuteronomy 28, there would be plagues of incurable illnesses as a result of not following after God. There would be curses upon of drought and dust bowls that would take place upon the nation. The curses continue in the insignificant enemies that will uh, put our armies to chase. Are we living in that time right now? I would say so. An epidemic of divorce is another curse as a result of not obeying God. A wave of bankruptcies, just like we're reading about now. A loss of entire generation of young people to any number of ways. Rebellion, drugs, whatever that it may be. The prosperity of other nations at your expense. Look at what's happening. Even as I speak, the leaders of America are meeting with the NATO nations, and they are uh, have only been pressed to pay their part of the NATO expenses whenever uh, they were pressed to do so. Now you're seeing that rise and that problem again in the nations of NATO. Here's the last one I'll give you today. You'll become a debtor nation rather than a lender, according to Deuteronomy 28. And the Bible tells us that there are blessings and cursings in that entire chapter. I could go on. There's many, many more. But the fact is, this is not unprecedented from the beginning of the Bible all the way to the end, and especially during the coming time under the Antichrist. The Bible tells us in Revelation 13 that the one world economy under the Antichrist will become in such a condition, such a state, driving the people towards it, that power would be given to the Antichrist over all kindred and tongue. That they that dwell in the uh, earth will have to worship the beast, according to Revelation 13. That every person, both small and great, will take a mark in their forehead or in their right hand to swear allegiance to the Antichrist. And last, no man will be able to buy or sell, save they have the mark, the name, or the number of the name. It is in that vacuum of power that even we're seeing right now that out of a sea of people will rise one, the Bible says, that will be the son of perdition. He will be the Antichrist, the beast. He will be so satanically filled, but so intelligent through his ability to communicate with nations and to pull together, and this is already being talked about, under a one world economy, the prosperity of the world under the Antichrist as he sees it. It will not be God's prosperity. It will be something that will be false. It will rest upon sand. And the Bible continues in Revelation 18 to describe this mystery Babylon, which is the economic uh, platform of the Antichrist that rides upon religion, the very beast of Revelation 18, and causes people to uh, be at wonder about Babylon and the prosperity of it. And suddenly, the Bible says that all of that will come crashing down as the Antichrist is revealed. It's only been revealed in recent days that the, during the COVID pandemic that the United States spent more than $18 trillion during that particular time and causing us to go more into debt. What we're seeing right now across our globe is nothing short of Bible prophecy being fulfilled. And one of the last things that God deals with before there is ultimate judgment is the economic systems of the world. You're seeing it talked about right now about the doing away or pushing aside uh, the dollar as the standard of currency worldwide. And it's already happening with different nations. When that takes place, my friend, you can rest assured the Antichrist will come in with his system. Before that time, I believe that the church, the body of Christ, will be raptured off of this earth. That's the reason why it's so important for you to understand the word of God, Bible prophecy, have an understanding of it, and recognize that we're not the people that are citizens of this world. And we're not even citizens of the economy even of this world. Though we're in it right now and, and having to have wisdom to be able to guide ourselves day by day, God will help us and help you to be able to stay out of debt, to be in a place where you can uh, provide for your family, even in a world like we're in right now. Much like the Babylon of old, Daniel was able to stand in an evil day, and you and I can do that too. Here's some encouragement for you to pray for the laborers of the harvest so we can get the gospel out uh, faster than we ever have. 
to encourage one another to keep serving the Lord according to the scripture. And whatever you do, travel light. In other words, don't let things stay on you. Offenses, unforgiveness, whatever that it may be, cast it off and keep your heart prepared and ready for the next great event on the calendar of God. One of the references I'll make to you as we close today's Prophecy File briefing is an, what we might call an ancient book now, written in 1973 by then Pastor David Wilkerson. Contained in the vision, 1973, is exactly what is coming to pass today. Well, Pastor, that was in 1973. I want you to understand, just because a prophecy is made doesn't mean that it's gonna happen just tomorrow. What has been written in this book right here, according to the Word of God, parallel right beside it, you're going to find out is happening right now and is pointing toward the return of Jesus Christ. If you're not ready, get ready today. And until the next time we get together around God's Word, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.